All right, this problem reads that Nelson's first vertical leap measured 25 inches, his second attempt measured 30 inches. How many times greater was his second attempt? All right, so the first time Nelson had his vertical leap measured, he jumped 25 inches. And on the next attempt, he jumped 30 inches. Now, a common mistake here is that a lot of students would answer five, but that would not be the answer because if he was able to jump five times greater than his first jump, we would have to multiply 25 by five, which is 125, which obviously is a lot bigger than 30 inches. All right, so here is one way we can approach this. Now, when asked how many times greater, we are literally asking, what would we multiply 25 by to get 30? And obviously it can't be one because that would be exactly 25. And it can't be two because that would be 50. So it's just a little bit bigger than one. This number here should be somewhere between one and two. So to figure that out, we do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So what we do is we take the greater jump, which is 30 inches, and we divide it by the smaller jump, which is 25 inches. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 30 and divide it by 25. So 25 goes into 30 once. So we're gonna take one group of 25 away from 30, which leaves us with five. Now what we can do is we can express this answer as a mixed number. So we can say his second attempt was one and 5 25ths greater than his first attempt. So let's express that as a mixed number. And then what we have to do is take the fractional portion of our mixed number and simplify. So five and 25 have a greatest common factor of five. So what we're gonna do is divide the top and the bottom by a factor of five. So that would give us one whole and one fifth. So we would say that Nelson's second attempt was one and one fifth times greater than his first attempt. Now, another way we could have thought about this problem is to note that he did in fact jump five inches greater than his first attempt. So what we could do then is we could just take five and compare it to the original jump of 25 and reduce that, which is equal to one fifth. So that increase of five inches represents one fifth of the original jump. So on his second attempt, he got the full 25 inches, which would be one times as great because 25 and 25 are the same thing. But then that five extra represents one fifth of the original jump. All right, let's go ahead and solve another example. All right, so Edgar earns $33 per hour. He donates one sixth of his earnings to charity. How much of his earnings does Edgar keep if he works 10 hours? All right, so the problem states that one sixth of his earnings goes to charity. But the question is asking, how much does Edgar keep for himself? All right, so the amount he donates and the amount he gets to keep must add up to be one whole or his entire earnings. So the amount he gets to keep for himself would be five sixths of his entire earnings. All right, because Edgar gets to keep five sixths of his entire earnings, we're just gonna write that as an expression. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take five sixths and we're gonna multiply that by his entire earnings, which is calculated by 33 times 10. So what we could do first is multiply 33 by 10 and then multiply that answer by five six. But because we're multiplying all three of these numbers together, the commutative property of multiplication says we can go in any order that we wish. So what I'm gonna to choose to do is I'm going to take the six and 33 and simplify a little bit. I know that three is a common factor of six and 33, so three can be divided into six twice and three is divided into 33 11 times. Now, two and 10 share a common factor of two. Two goes into itself once and two goes into 10 five times. Now, if you take a look, all of our denominators are ones. That means our denominator is going to have a product of one. Now at the top here, all we have to do is multiply all three of these numbers together. So I'm gonna start with five times five, which is 25. And 25 times 11 is 275. And of course, 275 divided by one is exactly 275. So that is the amount that Edgar would get to keep for himself after donating the other six of his earnings to charity.